What drives a person to commit heinous acts such as serial killing? Can a woman, a protector of life, become a taker of it? Today we delve into a rare and chilling phenomenon, the story of a female serial killer. This isn't a tale from the dark corners of a far-off land, but from the bustling city of Bangalore, India. We're unraveling the life of K.D. Kempama, a name that sends shivers down the spine. Dive into the dark world of Kempama, also known as Cyanide Malika. Born into a world of ordinary existence, no one could predict the path Kempama would take. Hailing from a modest background in Bangalore, Kempama's early life was seemingly unremarkable. She was raised in a lower-middle-class family, where she was taught the importance of hard work and perseverance. Like many others of her time, she was married young, and she began her life as a wife, and eventually, a mother. However, life was not kind to Kempama. Her marriage was far from blissful. It was plagued with domestic issues and economic hardship. These struggles, coupled with the societal pressures of her time, created a volatile concoction within her. There were no telltale signs, no glaring red flags that would hint at the deadly path she was about to embark on. She was just another woman trying to navigate through the trials and tribulations of life. Yet, beneath this facade of normalcy, a dark shadow was growing. In the span of eight years, six women fell victim to Kempama's deadly scheme. This chilling chronicle of death began in the year 1999, unfolding a tale of deceit and murder that would haunt the annals of Indian crime history for years to come. Kempama, also known as Cyanide Malika, had a sinister modus operandi that preyed upon the vulnerabilities of lower middle class women struggling with domestic issues. She would befriend these women, empathize with their plight, and then under the guise of offering them a sacred talisman for their troubles, she would hand them cyanide capsules. The unsuspecting victims would consume the lethal poison, believing it to be a spiritual remedy for their hardships. Once the cyanide took effect, Kempama would rob the women of their belongings. Their lives were tragically cut short, and their families left to mourn, while Kempama slipped away into the shadows, undetected and unperturbed. This macabre dance with death continued for eight long years, with Kempama leaving a trail of lifeless bodies and shattered families in her wake. By 2007, the deadly tally had reached six. Six lives snuffed out, six families destroyed, and one woman, Kempama, orchestrating this symphony of death from behind the scenes. Her calculated acts of murder and theft, so cold-blooded and remorseless, shook the very fabric of society to its core. Each act a haunting testimony to the depths of human depravity. In 2007, the reign of Cyanide Malika came to an abrupt end. The law finally caught up with K.D. Kempama, ending her eight-year killing spree. Her capture was anything but ordinary, a tale of diligent police work and an observant jewelry store owner who noticed Kempama's suspicious behavior. The subsequent investigation was a meticulous process revealing a chilling tapestry of deceit and murder. Evidence mounted against Kempama as the police unearthed her modus operandi. She preyed on vulnerable women, poisoning them with cyanide, and then robbed them of their possessions. The courts were presented with an irrefutable case, leading to a swift conviction. Kempama was sentenced to a lifetime imprisonment, a sentence commensurate with the severity of her crimes. The monster had fallen, and a measure of peace restored to the communities she had terrorized. Justice had been served, but the scars of her crimes remained. The tale of Kempama sends a chilling reminder of the darkness lurking beneath the surface of ordinary lives. The impact of her gruesome deeds still lingers, haunting the families of her victims and sending shockwaves through society. These were women of humble backgrounds, grappling with domestic issues, their lives abruptly and brutally ended. Their dreams, hopes, and potential contributions to society were stolen away replaced by a grim legacy of fear and sorrow. Broadly, Kempama's case served as a wake-up call, shattering the myth of female criminals in India. It underscored the unsettling reality that women can be as lethal as men, capable of premeditated, cold-blooded murder. This unsettling revelation compelled a re-examination of gender stereotypes, 
leading to more comprehensive and unbiased criminal profiling. In the annals of crime, the name Kempama, or Cyanide Malika, is etched in infamy. Her story, a grim chapter in India's criminal history, serves as a brutal testament to the depths of human depravity.